வணக்கம் வெல்கம் டு திஸ் கோர்ஸ் அண்ட் பயோமெடிக்கல் இன்ஸ்ட்ருமெண்டேஷன் வி ஹவ் பின் லுக்கிங் அட் த பேசிக்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஆம்பிளிஃபிகேஷன் ஆர் பயோ சிக்னல் அக்விசிஷன் அண்ட் ஆம்பிளிஃபிகேஷன் இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வி வில் ஜஸ்ட் ஹாவ் அன் ஓவர் வியூ ஆஃப் சிக்னல் ப்ராசஸிங் வாட் ஆர் த டிஃப்ரெண்ட் டைப்ஸ் ஆஃப் நாய்ஸ் ஹவு டு ஃபில்டர் ஃபார் நாய்ஸ் அண்ட் வாட் ஆர் த சோர்சஸ் ஆஃப் நாய்ஸ் அண்ட் ஹவு டு ரெடியூஸ் நாய்ஸ் ஸோ வில் ஃபோக்கஸ் அவர் அட்டென்ஷன் அண்ட் இம்ப்ரூவிங் சிக்னல் குவாலிட்டி ஸோ வாட் இஸ் சிக்னல் ப்ராசஸிங் signal processing essentially refers to the change or manipulation of signals to extract useful information it's not clear what is useful useful information is signal and enhance the quality of the useful information prepare them for subsequent analysis or display and to the extent possible reject less useful or useless or unwanted information unwanted things are not information unwanted things are unwanted things that is noise critically in biomedical instrumentation you need to have a high signal to noise ratio because of an inherent noise present in the system and some artifacts that obscure or obfuscate the true physiological signals you actually don't have an idea of the true signals it's very difficult to get the true signals Now, this is true in many other cases also but it is more true in biomedical instrumentation it is true in other engineering systems also for example so because if we say it's it's true in biomedical systems or in physiological systems it is not like this is not true in other engineering systems this is perhaps true in engineering systems also but it is more true in biomedical or physiological systems advances in digital signal processing techniques including computer based processing have significantly improved the capability of the medical devices right so what are this you are interested in amplification you know low noise low noise amplifiers high signal to noise ratio that is higher signal lower noise right and in principle such as following simple thumb rules such as nyquist sampling rates nyquist shannon sampling theorem right and using digital signal processing dsp for improved noise characteristics what are the various sources of noise before we go into that what is noise anything that is an unwanted information or unwanted signal that interferes with the desired signal that leads to an inaccuracy in the measurement of the desired signal is noise for example let us say i am interested in measuring ecg muscle signal that is happening due to movement of the patient is noise but if you are interested in measuring the movement of the patient or muscle signal then it is not noise that is the signal so it depends on what is considered signal what is the desired information when you are measuring ecg muscle signal is noise and when you are measuring muscle signal muscle signal is signal so it depends on what is considered important or signal what are common sources of uh, this physiological noise signals from other parts of the body like i already mentioned that you know muscle signal is a noise in ecg for example muscle movements or movements usually cause what are called as movement artifacts and very very difficult to remove this movement artifacts in ecg because the measurement of interest is the brain activity but the muscle or movements also fall in the same frequency so it's not exactly noise frequency is the same so how do you then remove this you cannot use filtering techniques to remove because signal is present in the same frequency noise is also present in the same frequency so you need some advanced signal processing approaches for this right then environmental noise electromagnetic noise hum of the ac 50 hertz 60 hertz noise rf noise mechanical vibrations other measuring or therapeutic devices in the, in the icu for example all these things can cause electromagnetic interference or noise 
and then instrumentation noise noise generated by electronic components within the same measurement system itself that is thermal noise short noise motion artifacts noise introduced by the patient movements during data acquisition for example in real world practical measurement scenarios there are different types of noise various noise types may manifest it can be identified by the usually by the power spectra and theoretical theoretical definitions first is thermal noise or the johnson nyquist noise caused by random thermal agitation of electrons in a conductor usually has uniform power density across all frequencies called as white noise and you can actually you can actually characterize this there's a way to characterize this right you can go you can you can characterize this noise using these principles right then there is the 1 over f noise or the flicker noise in this case the power density is 1 by the frequency the inverse of the frequency in low frequency ranges this is seen in semiconductor due to carrier fluctuation this is also seen in resistors when current flows this is found in physiological signals for example in heart rate fluctuations and it's uh, it's also found in very low frequency drift right that is considered part of a 1 over f noise in physiological systems also there is 1 over f fluctuations that may contain meaningful information not just noise sometimes 1 over f fluctuations can happen in intentional actions physiological activity also so it's not merely noise so it's not clear then what is 1 over f noise so again the definition of what is considered desirable signal and what is considered noise depends on what is the intention behind the measure and measurement system what is it that you are intending to measure that is critical then interference noise from other external physical or chemical sources considered interference and common sources are power line noise uh, electromagnetic devices that are happening for example fluorescence uh, fl fluorescent light or other electronic devices big electronic devices that mechanical vibrations that are happening in nearby machines for example and the nature of the power spectrum depends on the source of the noise and it might appear as discrete peaks for example resonant peaks or resonant frequencies not specific resonant frequencies are there harmonics or artifacts for example a common artifact is a motion artifact especially in eeg recordings biopotential recordings and ecg in eeg this might happen because of skin potentials or changes in the nature of electrode electrolyte interface properties we will dis discuss this in detail in future weeks it is quite difficult to filter actually it's an understatement to say quite difficult to filter impossible to filter because frequencies in which artifacts happen and signals of interest are in the same frequencies then how do you reduce you need to use what are called as non polarizable electrodes so usually you are interested in using non polarizable electrodes for recording the details of uh, the electrode theory we will look in future weeks or you need to minimize skin interference by short circuiting stratum corneum by abrading and puncturing methods is relatively uncomfortable procedure for the patient or the participant for example pacemaker pulses right pacemaker can be a significant noise when you are measuring ecg but then pacemaker is needed for the patient you cannot turn okay i am interested in measuring ecg now turn off the pacemaker then the patient will not be able to stay alive for a long time after that so you need to have the pacemaker so artificial pacemaker pulses can be a significant noise characteristics when monitoring patients via telemetry their amplitude can be significantly larger than the ecg amplitude that means you need to have highly specialized noise reduction techniques or signal processing techniques typical challenge effective noise reduction is uh, essential for accurate and reliable physiological measurements the techniques that are used in artifact minimization or avoidance you have to find a way to reduce noise at source minimize noise at source that's the first thing second is you know if you are interested in for example uh, measuring uh, you know audiometric measurement then sound proof it so that there is no other external noise for example proper shielding of cables it can help in sometimes but not always 
you know to to reduce electromagnetic interference and then identify sources of artifacts identify in removing sources after first you minimize uh, the source of artifact for example eye blinks eye blink is a common artifact in eeg so you can request the participant or the patient to not blink their eyes it is not always possible but suppose they blink their eyes then you need to find a way to remove the eye blink related artifact using advanced signal processing techniques using simple thresholding to relatively complex or relatively advanced algorithms then filtering techniques these are basic signal processing tools uh, fundamental signal processing tools that uh, selectively pass or attenuate specific uh, frequencies this is used to separate desired signal from the not desired undesired signal because physiological signals usually occupy specific frequency ranges remember that while you are interested in measuring measuring ecg emg or the muzzle activity is noise but while you are interested in measuring emg emg is signal so what is signal and what is noise is a decision that the clinician or the or the researcher will have to decide so it's not a trivial decision so there are different filtering techniques you know these things uh, some common uh, you know low pass filter uh, this is a low pass filter uh, high pass filter we know these things from our uh, basic electrical engineering low pass filters usually allow frequencies below a specific cut off frequency and attenuate higher frequencies and useful for removing higher frequency noise signals while retaining the slow varied physiological signals sometimes uh, if you are interested in uh, you know retaining higher frequency signals while re while removing lower frequencies then uh, you know you may be interested in having high pass filters likewise band pass and band reject filters right uh, frequencies uh, i mean allow frequencies within a particular band to pass while rejecting all other frequencies is called band pass filters and band stop or band reject or notch filters are usually used to remove for example uh, power line interference right these are things that you know from basic electrical engineering just reviewing this for you so with this we come to the end of this video in this video we looked at different types of noise what are the various sources of noise how to filter what are the various types of filtering techniques available how to reduce noise and so on and so forth so remember that you know it's critical to remember that more filtering is not always better sometimes you may also end up removing signal not always better because sometimes you might end up removing signal when you filter too much you might end up removing signal and if you think that if you use digital signal processing to eliminate all noise dsp eliminates all noise because dsp is so digital signal processing is so advanced that it will eliminate all noise no this is not true no digital signal processing cannot eliminate all noise some noise will still remain right noise is always harmful no not always depends it depends right sometimes as you may think that you know higher sampling is always better no sometimes sometimes it is useless to filter beyond the nyquist level this because you might uh, simply increase the processing over overhead you know sometimes it is good but not always okay so with this we come to the end of this video in this video we have looked at uh, you know signal processing techniques sir just an overview of signal processing techniques right thank you very much for your attention